Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about internal consistency of a scale or questionnaire. Uh, just before we jump into the actual calculations that we're going to be doing here, I want to just talk about why you would consider uh, measuring the internal consistency of a scale uh, and um, some of the kind of background behind this. Well, uh, let, let me use a running example here. Say you're a teacher and you, uh, maybe you're a math teacher and you just finished teaching your students trigonometry. Now you want to assess how well the students uh, comprehended the material. So you give an exam, right? That's why we give exams. Now the exam usually, as you noticed, contains a few questions, not just one question because there are many ways to ask questions about a particular topic. So the teacher comes up with an exam or a questionnaire or a quiz, however you want to label it, with a few questions on it. And ideally, the questions are on topic. In other words, they're all about trigonometry. They're the, the terminology I'm going to start using for that on topic is they're internally consistent, meaning all of the questions on this exam are about one overarching topic or scale or construct or trait. And in that case, it is the topic of trigonometry. The teacher wants to test your comprehension of trigonometry gives you a bunch of questions that are hopefully about the same topic of tri trigonometry. Now, that's from an examination uh, perspective. Oftentimes researchers create scales to measure certain constructs, uh, whether they're social scientists, psychologists, whatever it may be. They may be developing, uh, maybe trying to learn about some construct out in the in the world that they're studying and so they create um, a, a bunch of questions or items or components sometimes these are these are used synonymously and these are aimed all of these are aimed at getting at that construct that they're trying to learn about so these so although they might be uh, interested in learning about for example um, attitudes of, of U.S. citizens towards immigration policy, uh, let's say, of, of, um, uh, of taking Syrian refugees, they may, pres may they might want be tempt you might be tempted to just create one question saying, what do you feel about uh, Im importing refugees from Syria? Uh, uh, well, a much better way to go about it is to ask that question or to present that question in a few different ways. And we'll call those various questions. But overall, we want all those questions to be aimed at that consistent um, topic of refugee uh, attitude towards uh, importing refugees from Syria. Therefore, we want all of the questions or components or items in that scale that's trying to learn about the construct or topic of attitudes towards refugees, import, re importing refugees from Syria to be consistent, to be measuring the same thing. So statisticians have developed a measure for consi internal consistency for a scale. And, that, and one of the, the most widely used is called Cronbach's alpha. So here we have it. So we're, we're kind of getting closer to, to getting to this. Cronbach's alpha, and I've got, I grabbed this from various reliable sources on, online, is a measure used to assess the, I would skip to internal consistency of a set of scale or test items, okay? So if you like the exam example, or if you like the questionnaire example, uh, it doesn't matter. We want, we want to measure how internally consistent our scale or exam is. So the way we go about it, and I've grabbed, here's our formula for Cronbach's alpha. So what Cronbach's alpha is gonna produce is a value from 
as low as I believe negative one as high to as high as one similar to correlation okay and so here typically negative values are a big red flag that you've reversed ordered your your scale items so it's not very typical so typically your values are from zero to one so suppose we measure quantity with a, a sum of k components so those would be the k would be represent the number of components in our questionnaire or, or our exam the number of questions you could think of so y1 y2 all the way to yk those are the individual questions on the exam and x here in this formula represents the sum so when you get an exam grade you're usually looking at x and these would be your scores on the individual questions okay so the way Cronbach's alpha is defined we use the symbol alpha the greek letter is the is the, through this formula so basically what we're going to do now uh, is using excel compute Cronbach's alpha using this formula as our guide okay so let me pull this aside and this guy as well and let's get to work here let me tell you what our data set here is and what we're working with so we had 20 subjects so we could think of these as people who took our exam or filled out our questionnaire it turns out that our questionnaire had 14 questions or items or components and they were all at least based on what we're seeing here pretty uh, clear that they were on a five point likert scale meaning one to five so whatever it was we were asked we were probably asking them their opinions about certain things or their feelings or attitudes and we gave them a one to five with one being maybe something like very weakly agree or very uh, very uh, sorry strongly disagree with with something on, and five being strongly agree with something and zero being neutral uh, uh, sorry, three or four being something somewhat neutral. Whatever it was, these are one to five scales. Okay, all of them. Now what we want to do is to see whether these 14 questions are consistent. In other words, was this questionnaire, was this scale internally consistent? So first thing we'll do is I've set up some of the components that we need. We're going to need the number of items or questions or components so these are just think of these as synonyms so clearly we see that there are 14 so let's count that using a cell formula count a indeed we see there were 14 questions now we need the sum of the item variances well well here are the items or questions right so each one has a variance among the 20 subjects so let's get the variances okay so So let's say these are the variances, okay? So equals var dot p. So I got the variance for the first question, and I could just drag that over to the 14th question, okay? So I got all the variances. Now, what we need to do in this formula, as you see in the numerator, it says we need the sum of all k variances. So we have each of the individual ones. So let's sum them. So equals sum. And then let's highlight all of these variances that we just calculated. OK, so 42.99. Next, we need the variance of total scores. In fact, where am I getting this from? I'm looking at this, this formula is my guide. So far, I got the number of components. So I'm going to be able to calculate this fraction here. I got the numerator in this part, which was the sum of the item uh, variances. Now I need the variance of the total exam scores. So to get the total exam scores first and then get the variance of the total exam score. So for the first subject, so person one scored a 14 on this exam. And I could just drag that down. I see like, for example, four, uh, person uh, subject four scored a 62, etc. How much variance was there? Okay, I'm getting these little uh, 
warnings because I didn't sum the first column because that's just the subject number. Uh, so I could ignore all these. In fact, I might be able to do them all at once. Or maybe not. Okay. Uh, so never mind that. So what I need is the variance of the total scores. Here are the total scores. I can get the variance here. Fair dot P. By the way, where did I get this, uh, this data from? Well, I presented my scale or my, I gave my exam to, to 20 subjects as kind of a preliminary run to see how, how well my exam. So one thing, so if you create a new scale or a new exam, you, you're going to have to test it out. It's, it's going to be a very, it, it, you can't tell the internal consistency, at least in a quantitative fashion, unless you get some data back. So think of these 20 subjects as kind of the lab rats of my new scale. And I want to see how well the scale is performing, at least as far as internally consistent. Okay, so I got all the components in my formula here, right? I got the number of items. Those were the number of questions or components. I got the variance of e the sum of the variances of each of the components across the 20 subjects. And I got the variance of the total scores of the 20 subjects. So now let's put it all together and get Cronbach's alpha and then talk about what that uh, result indicates. So number of components divided by number of components minus one times one minus the sum of the variances divided by the total score variance and i see i have a cronbach's alpha so this is the kind of this is the ultimate number on this on this scale of 0.9922 that is as high as i would ever want it that's a very high, uh, uh, that's, that's an indication of a very high level of internal consistency among the 14 questions or items in this scale or exam. Okay, so generally for research, when a researcher is developing a new scale, say to measure some characteristic or construct that they're interested in, uh, values of 0.75 or higher of Cronbach's alpha is an indication that the scale will be respectable and will be uh, internally consistent and is and something that you can kind of move forward with and publish. So here in this made up example, we achieved a uh, Cronbach's alpha of 0 0.99, 0 0.99. That is highly, highly internally consistent. And so much so that uh, this actually brings up a more subtle point. I might want to consider uh, the redundancy in my questions. There might be some questions in here that are not really contributing anything unique to my understanding of the construct. So I could probably even trim this down and make it a little more lean. But as it is, I'm not dissatisfied. I'm happy. I'm satisfied with my scale. Okay, so that's how you calculate Cronbach's alpha and hopefully you have a better understanding of what Cronbach's alpha does and what internal, cons internal consistency is. Okay, so till next time, subscribe, share, like, and watch the 400 plus other tutorial videos I have on data science, data analytics, and mathematics and statistics on Jalayer Academy, youtube.com forward slash rdjalayer. Have a great day.